so in this activity, uh, what we're going to learn about is how to interpret mass volume graphs. Um, these are, you know, it says up here that graphing is a very, very important way to, uh, in science. Uh, it basically enables us to see trends, and that's a big part of why we want to graph things. Sometimes things aren't obvious, it's not clear what the relationship is between two sets of variables. And so if we graph it, we can often find out really interesting information about things. And so that's what we're going to look at now. We're going to see, um, we're going to graph the mass and volume of different liquids and determine their densities graphically. Okay, so it's a good skill. Uh, it will tie into what you're going to be doing in your grade 9 math courses as well. Okay, so what we're going to look at first is a graph and a data chart for water. Okay, now from our previous experiments, we know that the density of water is approximately one gram per milliliter. So we already know that from our experiments and just from discussions. Now, if this is what the value is for water, we're going to see what happens when someone does an experiment. So uh, just like what you guys did in class, uh, someone measured out five milliliters, put it on a scale, did the subtractions necessary, and found that it was five grams. The person put 25 milliliters of water, and they measured that it was 25 grams. They put 50 milliliters of water, they got 50 grams, and they graphed it. So, coming down to the graph, we can see that we have mass in grams. Notice how it has the label very clearly put and the unit. So it's really important that you include both the the um, the label and the unit. On the bottom it says volume and that's in cubic centimeters. Okay, so that's down in the bottom part right here. First part is five milliliters, so we find five milliliters and five grams. <laughs> Put a little dot. Then we find 25 milliliters and 25 grams right there. And then we find 50 milliliters and 50 grams. And there we are. Now what they did from this is they, they first made the three dots and then they connected those dots with a line. Okay, so that was done for you. I didn't do a very good job there. In fact, I'll do it in blue if you want to highlight yours in blue as well. It's not a bad idea since we're talking about water in this case. Okay, so there we go. So that's in blue. All right. Now I'm going to label this as water, okay? And so the question asks, uh, there's a few things we're going to fill in the values here. And uh, there's some questions down here that we're going to be doing. All right, so first of all, if I said that you had 55 milliliters of water, right? Can you figure out how much mass you would have? So we can go to our graph, we find 55 milliliters of water, we move all the way up, and we're here. That's where if we extended this line, that line, I'm going to move where I put water. So if we extend the line, it looks like this. So I'll write water here, nice and tight. Okay. So if we find 55 milliliters and we go up, it gets here, we go across, oh, it's 55 grams. You're probably going to figure that out on your own, knowing that every that five milliliters was five grams. So if we went from 50 to 55, that's a jump of five. The mass would also go up by five. Okay, what about if I had 65 grams? Well, what you can see is that for every milliliter, it looks like there's for 50 milliliters, 50 grams, 55 milliliters, 55 grams, five milliliters, five grams. So it looks like that if you had 65 grams, which is over here, so 65 grams, we go across hit the line, come down, oh, it's 65 milliliters. Okay, how about if we had 25 milliliters? I think you could guess, think about it. 25 milliliters, if you go up, touch the line, come across, you would see it's 25 grams. Okay, the next question says, as the volume of the sample increases from 20 to 30, does the mass increase or decrease? Well, if we're increasing by 10 milliliters, the mass will clearly increase by 10 grams in this case. Okay, so the next part it says, calculate the density of water using the graph. Okay, so how to do this is we're gonna use something called the rate 
of change and it's going to be given a name called slope, the slope of the line. And we can calculate it. And how we calculate it is, and the slope will tell us what the density is. In this case, the density is equal to the slope because it's the mass over the volume. So if you recall from our all the work we've been doing so far, density is mass over volume. So the slope, or how much the the slope of this line is, will tell us how much how dense the object is. So how we do that is we calculate the slope, and it's rise over run. And you're like, what's a rise? Well, what you're going to do is we're just going to pick two points on the curve. So let's say um, I'm going to pick... Uh, the 20 here, and I'm going to say, well, if I pick this point here, I'll just make it easy for this one. If I pick this point here, I would say, okay, the rise is how much it goes up from here to here. That So I make a little triangle, like so. So here's our rise right there. Okay, so that's 20 uh, grams. So it's 20 grams from there to there. And the run is across. So it's from here to here. Well, that's 20 milliliters. So in our graph, to get from this point here to this point here, we had to go up 20, which is the rise, and we had to go over 20, which is the run. And now we just divide it. 20 over 20 is 1 gram per milliliter. Now, since the slope is the density, we know that the density is one gram per milliliter. And this is for water. Okay. This could have worked from any position that we took the slope or found the, the, the rate of change. We could have picked any numbers that we wanted. I'll show you an example. Let's say that I just said make a triangle on the graph right here. Okay. If I look at how much it rises, I look here, this is 20. 20 up to 30. From 20 to 30, how much did it rise? Well, from 20 to 30, oh, that's a rise of 10. Okay? Then I look at the bottom and I say it went from 20 to 30, which is a run of 10. So if this is 10 units, and that's 10 units, and slope is rise divided by run, 10 over 10 is 1. So you get the exact same result of 1 gram per milliliter. And it's grams per milliliter because you would see that you've got up here the, um, that it's the, the rise is grams and the run is milliliters. Is, in this case, I put cubic centimeters, milliliters. Remember, they're the same thing. No matter anywhere on this graph, if I made a triangle and found the rise over the run, I would end up with equaling out at the value of one gram per milliliter. Okay, so the next part of the task <coughs> is to take three other substances that you see here, and you're going to graph them onto this graph. Okay, so substance A, you're going to graph it and then you're going to find the slope using the method of your choice. So for the first one, I can show you a volume of 10 is a mass of 5. So I find a volume of 10 is a mass of 5. 10 milliliters, 5 grams. Then it says right here, 20 milliliters is 10 grams. 20 milliliters is 10 grams. 30 milliliters is 15. If you follow that along and graph each point, you're going to end up with a nice graph, something like this, and you label it substance A. Okay, so just to look at that. Now, something interesting about the slopes, if this is water right here, 
and this is the new substance, the substance is less steep. And therefore, the amount of rise will be less than the amount of run. No matter where you look, the rise is smaller than the run, which means that when you calculate the density, it's going to be lower than one because it's less steep, which means that it will float if you mix these two liquids or put them together. This liquid will, if it's not soluble, this liquid will float on top of the water. So if it's less steep than water, it will sit on top. If we approach the steepness of water and then get past it, if we have a substance that say somewhere over here, this one has more of a rise, less of a run, and therefore its steepness or its slope will be greater than one or greater than water, meaning it will sink below the water. As long as it's not soluble, it'll form a layer below the water. And so you can get defined layers this way by looking at the density. Anything with a steepness curve greater than one or a slope greater than one will sink in water. Anything with a steepness curve or a slope less than one or less steep will float on water. Okay, so what you're going to do is complete the graphing for substance A, B, and C, and then using the slope equals rise over run, you're going to calculate in grams per milliliter the density for each substance, okay? And recall that slope is equal to the density in this case. Then you're gonna draw how, if they were not soluble with each other, how they would layer since they're all liquids in this case, and then answer the two questions below. That's your task.